So yes, guys, when we talk about consolidation, first of all, you need to understand that the problems are comprehensive. That means they're a little lengthy than the normal usual problems. So how do we approach these problems and what are the steps involved in consolidation? Now, to explain just the steps, first, let's take a small illustration. Let's take some simple example so that we understand exactly how does consolidation be approached with. Okay. Let's say for suppose, I have a balance sheet of parent enterprise in this way. I'm calling it as H holding company. Okay. Let's say the assets are 250. And there's also an investment subsidiary to the extent of 50. Let's say the equity share capital is 100. The surplus being 80. And my other equity or sorry, other liabilities are about 120. So the just taking random numbers guys don't tell me don't ask me what is the reason why i have taken those numbers let's talk about a subsidiary then equity share capital other I'll take my reserves as 30 and my other liabilities as I'll take my reserves as 20 and other liabilities as 30. 120 is easier to calculate, right? Okay. Let's say this was the instance which existed on the date of acquisition. On date of acquisition of controlling in Next, let's say the date of change was 1st April 2001. Okay, on that day, the balance sheet appeared in this manner. If I have to consolidate these financial statements, then the first thing that I have to do is identify my non controlling interest. I did not tell you how much was acquired, right? So, let's say this is 80% acquisition. 80% acquisition, therefore 20% is NCI. So first, let me start with computation of non-controlling interest. Non-controlling interest. The computation, go with the calculations guys. 20% of net assets is an subsidiary. 100 plus 120 or 150 minus 30, whatever it is, answer is 120. So NCI is 24. I'm going by proportionate cost method. If I have to calculate my cost of control here, guys, just one more change, guys. Let us assume that the assets are 200 and investments is acquired at 100. Okay. Now, let's start calculating. First part A is my cost of investment. Part B, NCI on date of acquisition which I know is 24. That is a date on which I have drafted those balance sheets. Has to be compared, has to be totaled and compared with part C, fair value of net assets in subsidiary on date of acquisition. Fair value of net assets in subsidiary S on date of acquisition. What is your cost of investment? 100. What is NCI? 24. Total is 24. 
compared with fair value of data sets in subsidiary on date of acquisition is 120. Therefore, it leaves me with a total of 4 or the difference of 4 which can be considered as my goodwill. When you consolidate, when you consolidate, the first thing that you need to understand is with respect to other liabilities and assets, it's a simple addition which is required. A simple addition of assets and other, li other liabilities is what is necessary. So let us start drafting out your consolidated balance sheet. Consolidated balance sheet of holding company H. Your assets, net assets, and total it. Total year assets 200 plus 150. Answer is 350. As far as your other item of asset is concerned, which is regarding your investment, this has to be cancelled. Eliminate this investment. But instead, I will get a goodwill or a bargain purchase. Here in this case, I got a goodwill of 4. So, additional item, goodwill of 4. Now, what about my other liabilities? My other liabilities which have to be reported. Look at the totals. Look at the total guys. 120 plus 30 is a total of 150. Right? At the same time, I have to arise a new item called as NCI. In this case, my capital and your other equity. Take only the holding companies equity and uh, you know equity share capital and reserves which is nothing but 180. Apply the same items. So total. How it tally in. Observe in simple sense, what are the items which I did not consider in consolidated balance sheet? Assets and other liabilities, simple addition I have done. Equity, share capital and reserves, only the subsidiary, only the holding company has been considered. What I did is the share capital of subsidy. Let's see how it got adjusted. This 120 which I did not consider, 120 which I did not consider. This 150, I'll divide it into two parts. One which belongs to the holding company. One which belongs to the, belongs to the holding company. 80% belongs to the holding company. So 96. NCI 20%, 24. Where should I write this 120? It is on the liability side. So even upon consolidation, this 120 should have been written on the liability side only. So what am I doing? First, I am writing 24 on the liability side as NCI. This 24 is handled out. What else I should consider? 96 should be written on the liability side. But what am I doing with this 96? Instead of writing 96 on the liability side, I am knocking off this investment on the asset side and I am saying the difference is 4 which has to be reported as Goodwill. So this 120 which is equity share capital plus reserve in the subsidiary is being broken down into two parts NCI and holding company. NCI on the liability side in the consolidated financial statements I am presenting the 24 rupees which is NCI share in 120 but to the extent of the difference of 96 which belongs to the holding company I am cancelling it against the investments in the subsidiary therefore the balance figure of 4 rupees. Clear? This is how I prepare consolidated financial statements and that is how it tell. Let's say for suppose I am going to the next year. So I am drafting the financial statements as on 31st of March 2022. 
I am drafting financial statements as on that day. First, the holding enterprise has an equity share capital of 100 as it is. My reserves and surplus that is other equity already existing in the balance sheet was 80 in holding company as on 31st March 2021. So current year profit also got added. Let's say this became 140. My other liabilities. What was existing earlier? So 80 rupees of profit, 80 rupees of reserve in holding company. Current year another 60 rupees of profit became 140. Your other liabilities which were 120 earlier, let's say became 160 now. Assets had investment in subsidiary and my chain, there is no change in the value of investment in subsidiary. It was 100 before, it is 100 now. So that means the balance of other assets in my holding company to balance, just to write it as balancing figure is 3M. Similarly, I am preparing even for the subsidiary as well. Similarly, I am preparing for the subsidiary as well. My equity share capital is 100. And even subsidiary profit. What was the reserve and subsidiary earlier? 20. Let's say the reserve and subsidiary has increased to 50 now. That means current year profit is 30. My other liabilities, last year other liabilities were 30. Let's say current year other liabilities are 20. And my assets are 170. This way I have balance sheet drafted for the next year. Now I am supposed to identify what is a consolidated balance sheet here. Let's try to prepare a consolidated balance sheet. Consolidated balance sheet of H. Right? Let's add up. Assets. Total it. What is the assets in holding company? 300. Subsidiary? 170. 470. What about the other liabilities? Existing 116 holding plus 20 in subsidiary 180. You calculated cost of control, and I told you that goodwill will not change. Cost of control will not change. It was 4, will remain 4. Now, equity share capital, there is no change in the holding company. Capital balance sheet is not tallying because there are two more items which has to come in reserves and surplus. And now look at here. What is your reserve and surplus of holding company? 140. Correct? So I am initially taking it as 140. What is the NCI last year? Last year's NCI was 24. I am taking the same thing. Observe the balance sheet will not tally. Look at the balance sheet now. This is 24. And how much? 300. 420. 444. What is the difference which is coming up? The difference between these two is exactly 30. What is this? 30? This 30 is the current year profit of subsidiary. It was 20 earlier, it became 50 now. So, what is the current year profit in subsidiary? 30. So, this 30 is the difference which is appearing. So, what should we do with this 30? Let's see. Subsidiaries. Two thousand twenty two belongs to the shareholders. So shareholders are broken down into two parts. Extent it belongs to holding H eighty percent, which is nothing but eighty percent of thirty is twenty four. To the extent it belongs to the subsidiary S twenty percent, which is nothing but six correct now what i'll do for me to tally the balance sheet holding companies 24 rupees is the share in profit of the subsidiary for the current year therefore when you prepare your reserve and surplus 
it is no longer to be considered as 120 or 140 but it is 140 plus 24 which is share in subsidiaries profit after the date of acquisition becomes 164. Your NCI is no longer 24. NCI should be measured on measurement day 24 at the beginning of the year plus his share in current year profit of 6. Therefore, 24 will now become 30. Or NCI normally also. If you calculate NCI normally, what is the subsidiary's net asset? Subsidiary's net asset is 120 minus 170 minus 20, 150. which is 30 so that same 30 i'm trying to write it in consolidated balance sheet automatically your balance sheet total is not 444 anymore it has come down to 474 which your balance sheet has tell therefore what is changing every year every year because of current year profits made by the subsidiary Two items always change. One is the reserve of holding company. Other one is the NCI. Every year this goodwill will remain constant. This is constant. There is no change as far as this value is concerned. As far as my other liabilities and my assets are concerned. I will adopt the same approach of adding those values. So if I have to break down now. What is the value which I did not do simple addition for 150. Correct. Let's look at this 150, what I will do now. Equity share capital plus reserve and surplus in S subsidiary is equal to 150. What do I do with this 150? Let's see. I'll first break it down. I'll first break it down into two parts. To the extent it belongs to equity share capital to the extent it belongs to, to the extent it belongs to equity share capital equity share capital amount is 100 reserve and amount is 50. of this 100 80 percent is held by the holding company balance 20 percent is held by minority minority and holding company minority holds 20% and holding company holds 80 Out of this reserve and surplus, what I do is, I'll again bifurcate the reserve and surplus into two parts. To the extent it belongs to holding company, to the extent it belongs to minority interest, 20% of that 30 is how much? 20% of 50 is 10. How much is holding company share? 40. But understand, out of this 40, again I will divide it into two parts. This 40, the amount which was existing on the date of acquisition is called as pre acquisition. To the extent I earned after the date of acquisition, I will call it post acquisition. What was pre acquisition? Before acquisition, the subsidiaries reserve was 20 out of which how much did i acquire 80 percent therefore my share in pre-acquisition reserve existing on the date of acquisition was 16. what is current year profit out of which holding company share is 24. what i do now is take this minority interest to the extent of 20 in share capital minority share of reserve to the extent of 10 total minority is 30 which I went into balance sheet. Look at the holding company now. Holding company, this particular amount of 80 plus this amount of pre-acquisition reserves in subsidiary to the extent of 16, this total is 96. This is the holding company share in net assets of the subsidiary existing on balance sheet date. Correct? How much did you acquire it by? I paid 100. The balance is 4. So, investment worth 100 got knocked out. Holding company share in share capital plus holding company share in pre-acquisition got knocked out. The difference appeared to the extent of 4. That 4 I have written in the balance sheet as goodwill. To the extent of this share, that share in 
profits of the subsidiary after acquisition that is 24 i added it to the reserves of subsidiary became 164 nci or minority of 30 goodwill of 4 appeared balance sheet tally so that means because of simple addition i did not take up these two amounts so these two amounts of 150 i have allocated this 150 in this particular man share capital of 100 and reserve of 50 out of share capital minority is 20 and holding company is 80 clear just check keep checking guys